Globalization has increased the volume of world trade and foreign investments. The revolution in the technological department has transformed the global economic scenario by reducing the costs of communication, providing easier access to information, and facilitating movement of labor and capital across the globe. Hence it becomes widely known that globalization on one hand is seen as an irresistible and benign force for developing economic prosperity to people throughout the world, and on the other end it is blamed as a source of all contemporary ills. In such a situation, the developmental goals of industries world over have to be essentially designed in a global context. This lesson discusses all these issues in details. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, we would be able to examine the concept and impact of globalization and development of world economies, understand the concept of sustainable development, analyze the role of business in sustainable development, discuss Millennium Development Goals as accepted by industries and economies all over the world, and in the end, the relationship between India and these MDGs. The Carnegie Endowment for International Peace defines globalization as a process of interaction and integration among the people, companies and governments of different countries, a process driven by international trade and investment and aided by information technology. This process affects the environment, culture, political system, economic development, prosperity and physical human well-being in societies around the world. The ILO report identifies two types of impacts of globalization, namely economic and social. As an economic impact, liberalization and expansion of international trade has led to increase in FDI investment and has also brought changes in the nature of financial flows by integrating the financial market. There is a visible change in the governance structure of the global financial systems with an increase in influence of private sector. Revolution in information and communication technology and declining transportation costs have resulted in multi-country based production of goods and services, which are technically and economically feasible. According to ILO, production process are unbundled and located across the world to exploit economic advantages arising from difference in costs. Factors availabilities and congeniality of investment climate. The global production system is also pronounced in the service sector where technological advancement has made it possible for services such as software development, financial services and call centers accessible from different countries around the globe. Technology has not only enabled economic globalization, but has also helped in increasing connectivity among civil societies, governments and individuals. And last but not the least, globalization has resulted not only in increased global competition and efficiency, but also in building convenient sources of transportation, machinery to churn out goods faster, better communication facilities and so on. Coming down to social impacts of globalization, small enterprises have been hit quite adversely. Rural and informal economies, unskilled, illiterate and assetless labor remain on the margins, resulting in persistent poverty. Industrial restructuring in the face of competitive global markets have only led in increase in the levels of unemployment. Relative poverty has increased in majority of the countries as an effect of globalization. Due to this, cross-country migration has also increased. As an indirect consequence, women are driven into an illegal economy in countries of destination, leaving them vulnerable to exploitation and trafficking. There also has been an increase in illicit cross-border activities like tax evasion, money laundering, sex and drug trades. Globalization has made rich richer and poor poorer. The global natural environment has also been affected by globalization and the greenhouse effect is for everybody to experience. Globalization has disrupted the ecological balance, thereby posing challenges to give rise to unprecedented ecological challenges, regardless sustainable development to the world in the 21st century. Responsible business has always contributed for societal development. Looking from macro perspective, the private sector has already contributed to the reduction of poverty at the global level during the past decade. However, the challenges of sustainable development in the new millennium are a new imperative for governments, 
businesses and society to collaborate and work to strengthen each sector and create a qualitatively better world to live in. The diagram shown here reflects the interplay of various components of social and economic development so as to eventually lead to sustainable development. Responsible business has always contributed for societal development. Looking from macro perspective, the private sector has already contributed to the reduction of poverty at the global level during the past decade. However, the challenges of sustainable development in the new millennium are a new imperative for governments, businesses and society to collaborate and work to strengthen each sector and create a qualitatively better world to live in. The diagram shown here reflects the interplay of various components of social and economic development so as to eventually lead to sustainable development. In the present context, the well-being of an average citizen is a measure of development. The Government of India, being a member state of the United Nations, established targets in the 10th as well as the 11th five-year plan to achieve the MDGs. As an effort towards poverty reduction, the 10th five-year plan targets reduction of poverty ratio by 5 percentage points, while the 11th plan targeted it by 10 percentage points. Similarly, as an effort to increase the level of employment, the 10th five-year plan aimed at providing gainful and high-quality employment at least to the additional labor force. The 11th plan took it forward by aiming the generation of 58 million new work opportunities, reduction of unemployment among the educated to less than 5%, etc. As an effort to provide 100% primary education, 10th plan aimed at bringing an increase in literacy rates to 75% within the plan period, while 11th plan targets to increase literacy rates for persons of the age 7 years and more to 85% by 2012. To reduce gender disparity, 10th five-year plan aimed at reduction in gender gap in literacy and wage rates by at least 50%. While 11 plan aims at reduction in gender gaps in literacy by 10%. Sex ratio for age group between 0 to 6 to be raised to 935 by 2011-2012. Ensuring that at least 33% of the direct and indirect beneficiaries of all government schemes are women and girl children. And so on. The reduction in the decadal rate of population growth between 2001 and 2011 has been determined to be brought to 15.9%. To bring down infant and maternal mortality rate, the 10th five-year plan aimed at reducing infant mortality rate to 45 per thousand live births by 2007 and maternal mortality ratio to 2 per thousand live births by 2007. Similarly, 11th plan takes it further by aiming at the reduction of infant mortality rate, IMR, 28 per thousand by 2012 and maternal mortality ratio MMR to 1 per thousand live births by 2012. India being one of the most progressive nations to control AIDS in the 10th plan targeted to achieve zero level increase of HIV AIDS prevalence by 2007 and aims under 11th plan to reduce new infection by 60 percent in high prevalent states so as to obtain reversal of the epidemic and by 40 percent in the vulnerable states. To put a check on malaria and other diseases, 10th plan aimed at 25% reduction in morbidity and mortality due to malaria by 2007 and provide all villages to have sustained access to portable drinking water. Under 11th plan, it is targeted to eliminate malaria and other waterborne diseases and provide clean drinking water for all and 100% sanitation coverage. To ensure environment sustainability, the Indian government targeted under the 10th five-year plan to bring an increase in forest and tree cover to 25% by 2007 and to clean all major polluted rivers by 2007. Under 11th plan, India aims to increase forest and tree covers by 5% points, attain WHO standards of air quality in all major cities by 2012 treat all urban wastewater by 2012 and to clean river waters and increase energy efficiency by an additional 20 percent by 2016-17. Now let us check our progress by finding if the statements given are right or wrong. Globalization has led to easier access to information and labor from around the globe. Globalization has led to easier access 
to information and labor from around the globe. Globalization has brought the economies closer. Globalization has brought the economies closer. Globalization has facilitated illegal trade practices and illegal migration. Globalization has facilitated illegal trade practices and illegal migration. The aim of sustainable development to reduce relative poverty. The aim of sustainable development is to reduce relative poverty. It is the government of the country who can lead sustainable development. It is the government of the country who can lead sustainable development. Now let us have a look at the answers and find out if we answered correctly. Globalization has led to easier access to information and labor from around the globe. It is right. Globalization has brought economies closer. That is also right. Globalization has facilitated illegal trade practices and illegal migration. The statement is also correct. The aim of sustainable development is to reduce relative poverty. No, that is incorrect. It is the government of country who can lead sustainable development. Again, the statement is not correct. It seems that we have learned pretty well. Now let us revise the entire lesson in brief. The impact of globalization on society is largely from technological and social changes. The world faces unprecedented ecological and social challenges impossible to be tackled by the rule of governance. World is interdependent with problems of poverty, unemployment, inequality, environmental degradation and social disintegration. The trend worldwide is to tackle problems by adopting collaborative and consultative models through a judicious mix of government, business and non-government initiatives. Thank you.